What can be measured? Lesson number four, the nature of science. Your objectives for today are to identify measurable properties such as mass, length, temperature, and volume. You will use scientific units of measurement and convert them using prefixes. This will help you with one current standard and some future standards as well. What can we measure? Think about each of these. Is it possible to measure them in a scientific way? If so, how would you do it? Yes, you can measure how far you are from the extant office. Can you measure how much space your body takes up? Yes, that's actually possible. We'll talk a little bit about how we measure volume later on, but volume is the amount of space that an object takes up, and that is something that can be measured. How much your parent loves you? Well, we know they love you so much, but there's no way to measure that in science. How much matter is contained in a Pop-Tart? Yes, that's called the mass, and you would measure it with balance. How long it takes you to get ready in the morning? You could measure that in seconds if you're really fast. Probably you'll need to measure it in minutes, and hopefully not hours, but that's time. Time can definitely be measured. How hot the air is outside today? You measure that with a thermometer, that's the temperature. So. Based on these we've been thinking about, there are five properties we've discussed so far that can be measured. Length, volume, mass, temperature, and time. We use the system of measurements in daily life in the US. We might measure length in inches or miles. Mass, we usually measure weight instead, which is a related idea. Weight is how heavy something is due to gravity and its mass. Mass is just the amount of matter in something. So in daily life, we'll usually talk about the weight of something in ounces or pounds. But in science, we're going to speak about mass. As long as you're on Earth, it is possible to convert between weight and mass easily. If you go out into space, your weight will be zero and you'll float free. But your mass will be exactly the same as it was down on Earth. Okay. Temperature, in everyday life, we use degrees Fahrenheit. In science, we're going to use Celsius. And volume, in daily life, people tend to flip back and forth. Sometimes they use, you know, this many cups or this many ounces of volume. And sometimes they use liters. In science, we're always going to use liters. So scientists measure the exact same properties that we use in daily life, but sometimes they use different units. That's so that scientists all over the world can agree and use the same units and not run into any trouble trying to understand how many miles something is in a country where everyone uses kilograms. I'm sorry, kilometers. So, either way, all countries agree that scientists will use the same measurements, and those are the measurements that we'll look at as well. And this chart explains the name, symbol, and a comparison for each scientific unit of measurement. For length, that unit is the meter, with symbol M. And if you want to think about a meter, compare it to a baseball bat. That's about one meter long. Mass will measure in grams, with the symbol G. A nickel's mass is one gram, so if you bounce a nickel around on your hand, you can feel that one gram is very light. Temperature, in science, will use Celsius. Degrees C is the symbol. Water freezes at zero degrees Celsius and boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Volume is measured in liters. As I said, we do use that sometimes in daily life in the US, although other times we use cups, ounces, quarts, and things like that. For comparison, a large soda bottle, like the Sprite bottle you see here, is two liters. So half of that would be a liter. Now. I mentioned kilometers before, but just now I said that meters was the unit that scientists use. Well, we have prefixes for our units so that we can measure very big things and very small things. Kilo means 1,000 with the symbol K. One kilometer is 1,000 meters, better for measuring very large lengths, like the length of, let's say, the Pennsylvania Turnpike from 
Pittsburgh all the way to Philadelphia. You wouldn't want to measure that in meters. Kilometers would be best. Similarly, for a large mass, one kilogram equals 1,000 grams. What if you want to measure smaller things, even smaller than a meter, even smaller than a gram? Well then, you could use the prefix centi, means 0 0.01 or one hundredth, the symbol is C. For example, one centimeter equals one hundredth of a meter. Milli means one thousandth or 0 0.001, the symbol is M. One milliliter equals one thousandth of a liter. One millimeter equals one thousandth of a meter as well. So I'm going to ask you to think about this. If one milliliter equals one thousandth of a liter, then how many milliliters are in a liter? First, you're going to write out the equation that you know based on the prefix. One milliliter equals one thousandth of a liter. Next, you multiply both sides by the same number to get the units you need. You can multiply more than once if needed, depending on what answer you're trying to get. Here's an example. We want to know how many milliliters are, is in one liter. So we're going to multiply both sides by 1,000. On the left, 1 times 1,000 equals 1,000 milliliters. On the right, 1,000th times 1,000 equals 1 liter. So we see that 1 liter equals 1,000 milliliters. Here's a second example. Let's say you measured a room that is 6.5 meters long, and you would like to know how many centimeters that equals. 1 centimeter equals 100th of a meter. We're going to multiply both sides by 100. On the left, 100 centimeters. On the right, 100th times 100 equals 1 meter. Now, we want to know about the room, though, and the room is 6.5 meters long. So let's multiply both sides by 6.5. On the left, 100 times 6.5 equals 650 centimeters. On the right, 1 meter times 6.5 equals 6.5 meters. So the room is 650 centimeters long. Okay, that's it for today. Here's a quick wrap up and I want to point to you a resource if you need it. We measure properties such as length, volume, mass, time, and temperature in daily life and in science. Scientific measurements are given in specific units for easy comparison. Adding prefixes to the units allows us to measure very small or very large amounts. We can use the definitions of the prefixes to convert between units. Want to read about this on your own? Click on the resource link making measurements skill sheet to see a textbook style page with more information about each of these units and how to measure them. Make sure you answer every question on the quiz below to get full credit for watching today's lesson. And I hope to see you in live class. Have a great day everyone. Remember to email, call BBIM or visit Cyber Cafe to reach me for extra help if you need it with anything at all. Take care.